I think maybe the first thing that had to do with photography was uh, my mom just gave me a this, like a cheap ass little plastic camera. So I just started taking pictures of this little thing, and then eventually she gave me her Nikon from the '70s. It kind of was it was photography, you know. And then I learned little things like you know what does a super fast shutter speed do? It's like oh yeah, when I'm I have a real camera. I've grown up. Like, everything is going to be like a super fast shutter speed. Look how it freezes water. That's amazing. And you learn little things like that over and over again. Daddy! Let Neptune strike ye dead, Winslow! Hawk! It is briny. It feels old and crusty. Uh, the term he used was, you know, it's it's black and white with a cherry on top. I don't know, I don't know what that means, but uh, first of all, like, there's red in it? No, it's, it's um, all I could think that that meant was just, it's just a classical shot for black and white, high contrast, you know, old school. You, you could use photographic references to shoot it. We had years to sort of, you know, for it to percolate. So it just kind of sits there and you get ideas like, well, what's, what kind of black and white is it? Like, so I'm thinking of stuff, he's thinking of stuff, and, and creatively, there is a lot of just, crossover generally he thought of something I'm like yeah that totally makes sense you know and then I would think of something like yeah it should be orthochromatic you know and he's like well, what is that well yeah well it should feel like this kind of photograph where the skies are blown out and the, the skin is craggy and it's like really hazy that's why this looks that certain way you can you know feel really smart like teaching about orthochromatic film and he's like yeah that totally makes sense so uh, there's very little that uh, one of us will put out there that doesn't really make sense to the other the aspect ratio wasn't like literally, you know, we're making a 1930s film. Rob just likes a boxy aspect ratio, and I think 133 is like his, he imagines things, his go-to. So this was kind of marked as that. It made sense, right? It's like, you know, you have a lighthouse, you get confined spaces, only two dudes. It, it existed that way for a while uh, in his imagination. He even wrote it on the script, you know, page two. So no one would be surprised when he submitted it, you know, like this, we want to shoot on black-white film. It's going to be this crazy aspect ratio. Even put mono sound in there. That didn't happen, but you know, two out of three isn't bad. We're shooting with black and white film, uh, so that which was very important, uh, just texturally. You know, how do you get the light levels that high? Because the light levels were, you know, between the old old lenses, it had to, which you can't use wide open. You got to stop down a little bit, otherwise it's just like smear city. So you need a certain aperture. You got to hit this aperture. You have black and white film, which has you know a tenth of the sensitivity of a modern digital camera. So everything had to be lit. So you have a lantern, you know, uh, it's not an oil flame in there. It's a, I think it was a 500 watt halogen, you know, and it's like just enough to expose a face at like this distance. Much of the remarks about, you know, how it's natural light. It's just, uh, yeah, it was based on the actual light sources, it was candles, you know. It, when we visited the lighthouse in Northern California, that would have been built with a, for an oil flame or a, a low wattage incandescent uh, bulb. I think there's like a 75 watt bulb in there. But for us, you know, shooting at, at this light level, and you need to, you know, catch atmosphere in the air and all this stuff. Yeah, we put a, a 6,000 watt HMI bulb in there, which comparatively obliterates, you know, uh, anything that the real lighthouse would have had. Quality of light is per is paramount, but then you know, quantity became an issue too. So it's trying to find the compromise between the two. It's like, what's the tangible part? of making make-believe. Yes. You know, that, it's, it's, I guess it's magic, right? You have like something that doesn't exist and then you have to figure out how to make it. I guess that's also what's satisfying about shooting film because it's actually a physical thing. It's light, but electronically it's like, well, it's kind of the same. It feels like the same thing, but film is like, no, it, it actually exists. This thing you invented actually, it, here, here it is. There's proof, you know, whereas, uh, yeah, I guess it's it's uh, it's the alchemy of make you know making making it all real. I never got into sports. I was playing make believe probably a little too old, you know, ten, twelve, something like that. It was just a way to keep it going. It's kind of a ridiculous profession, but you get to do uh, like technical, respectable things too, you know, in the service of this swirly magic land. <laughs>